Amen. Wow, what an awesome day. Y'all are such a great-looking group. Y'all really look good from right here. <laughs> and up close, too. All right. <laughs> well, welcome, uh, LifeGate. Welcome to those of you watching on social media. We're always excited to share the word of the Lord from LifeGate Church, as Dahlia said. Uh, a place to grow and a good place to call home. So we welcome you today, and I'm hopefully the Lord is just going to download some heavy revelation so that we can just continue to grow. Amen. Well, I want to, uh, first of all, before we get started, uh, for all of us at LifeGate Church, I just want you to be praying for Natalie. Natalie Byers, our member, she uh, just lost her father. Uh, just a few days ago, he went on to be with the Lord, but this is within three months, she has lost both of her parents, and this uh, is, it's never easy, even though we can be forewarned by doctors, and even though we see the deterioration of our loved ones uh, in that transition between being on earth and going to heaven, it's, it's never easy, even when we're expecting it to happen, when it happens, it's still hard. And so um, I talked to her as, as soon as she texted me and told me that her father had passed on. I called her immediately, and we prayed together. And she was, um, she was distraught, of course, and she needs our prayers um, in this season. And we're going to be reaching out to her with food and cards and things like that. But don't wait to get a card from us to sign. Go ahead and be proactive. Shower her with your love, send her text, um, send her cards, whatever it is you need to do from your heart to reach out and show your support and love. I know that she would be so grateful. Um, even if she doesn't get back with us soon, we know that her heart is touched. And she's tender right now, of course, so this is a real good time to show your love. Amen. Well, I'm excited to talk to you about uh, activating your faith. This is the title of my message today, Reactivate, Reactivate Your Faith. And I, I, I was ec ecstatic, actually, during worship. Wasn't that awesome worship? I mean, LifeGate, we are blessed. <laughs> I was standing and worshiping, and I thought, oh, we are so blessed uh, to have an awesome worship team. We're, we're very blessed to have Josh as our leader. Come on, let's put a hand clap together for Josh. He hears from the Lord um, he prophesies through worship and even through music. He's prophesying, I believe. So excited that we have great a great uh, team that runs the overhead, the whole media department. Thank you so much. It was just awesome. And, of course, with Justin on the sound. And thank you all for creating an environment so that we can just come in and get lost <laughs> Just get caught up, actually, just caught. Some of you get wasted. That's a, this is, a, this is a, the only good time we can get wasted. <laughs> other kind of being wasted, we don't want to go there. That's a whole other message. That's so, that, those are listed in the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> don't go there to Deuteronomy's, Okay. <laughs> But during worship, I, I had that vision uh, of, you know, where it talks about, and I gave the word, op open up, you know, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And because the king of glory is coming through. And I had, I had a vision of that, these large gates opening, and Jesus just coming through with, with an army of the Lord with him. And, and in this instance, it was the angelic host. And because he is, he's already defeated the enemy but I love the song of the Lord that came forth. You know, we, you know, to sing through the fire, sing through the fight, because he's already won this battle for us. But, but today, you know, we have to reactivate our faith. Our faith has already been activated. The, the moment we received Jesus as our Savior, that was the initial act of faith. And, and the same faith that got us saved, is the very same faith that's going to get us healed, delivered, set free. All the things that we need from heaven, it's the same measure of faith. We just have to activate it continually because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we are in a battle, amen? All right, but Jesus has won. So let's talk about that. How many of you know that faith is important? <laughs> okay, 
2 Corinthians, we find some insights concerning our faith. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though out, outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed by, day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we, now this is important. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So that is the foundation of where I want to launch today. But one of the things I just want to make mention of, and I, I have never seen this before as I've studied the word, because we, you know, we're all after the glory. We read books on the glory. We study the glory. We all want to be caught up in the glory of God, right? We, we want to experience the glory, which basically is the tangible presence of God. It's the, it's the weightiness. It's the eternal weightiness of God's glory. But, but bottom line, it's experiencing that tangible presence of God. Now, we experienced that during worship today. There was a tangible presence of the Lord here. But what I want you to, to see by this passage, that the faith, that faith and glory are connected. If you want to experience the glory of God, you've got to activate your faith. You have to keep your faith activated if you want to experience the glory realm. So this is another reason why faith is so important. And just realize that we cannot be moved by what we see in the natural. Because we'll get discouraged, but we have to focus on what is unseen. What is the unseen realm? The unseen realm is every promise that we have from God, the word of the Lord, that we are believing it's being accessed and brought into a present day reality. Those are the, un that's the unseen realm. And I'm constantly bombarding heaven, trying to access what God's promised me. It's still in the unseen realm. But we can access it and bring it into a present day reality with our faith. Second Corinthians, back to Second Corinthians, but now we're going to look at 5. I believe it's verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Once again, we cannot, we're not going to be able to walk in victory if we focus on what we see in the natural. But if we focus on that unseen realm, and, while, and those are what God has promised, what he has said, then we will be able to walk in victory no matter what. No matter what comes our way, we can still walk with the assurance of a victory because God has promised that to us. Amen? All right, so it's so important that we understand that we are people of faith. We are not led by fear. We don't walk by fear, but we walk in faith, focusing on what we hear and not what we see. Focusing on what we hear and not necessarily what we see. Now, it's true I have a lot of visions. I have open vision. But when I have a, a, a vision like I had this morning and I saw the, the Lord uh, going through these gates, I asked the Lord, I said, what do you want me to say about this? I have to still hear from heaven what God is saying through the vision. And not only is that in the scripture what I saw, but I also heard the Lord say, he is coming through your individual gates. We all have a gate in our life that needs to be opened up to the presence of the Lord. And God is entering in the gate so that we can walk into freedom. He's opening those doors, the eternal doors of promise and life and light. So I want to talk about the principle of the fig tree. How many of you know the story of the fig tree? Most of you have heard the story. Now, I'm not going to go there in Scripture. I'm just going to kind of lay it out for you for the sake of time this morning. But if you remember this particular uh, story, Jesus and his disciples were, were en route. Jesus was discipling his disciples. And, you know, he always did every, When he spoke, he did it for a reason. And the demonstrations that he did, as he was uh, teaching those that followed him, 
he always did it for a reason. There was always a, 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 a higher principle other than what they could just see in the natural. So as they walked by this fig tree, we get this assumption that it looks as if this fig tree is blooming and that there should have been figs on this tree. But there weren't. And so what happens is Jesus looks at this tree and he curses this tree to the very root. He said, you will not bear fruit anymore. And we get from this, uh, a lot of theologians have said, well, it's because Jesus was angry because he was hungry and it was breakfast time and he wanted to eat and therefore he got mad and he cursed the tree. But if that's really not the principle, I believe, that Jesus was trying to present to the disciples. I mean, how many of you know that if Jesus was really hungry? I mean, he knows how to cook fish for breakfast, and he, you know, he knows. I mean, he's a miracle-working God. So there was a stronger principle involved here. But you see, this fig tree didn't just dry up and wither away immediately. There was a lesson in this for the disciples. The disciples are watching all this, and they probably thought, well, they looked at that tree, and as they're walking away, they're still looking back, waiting for something hopefully to happen to that tree. And they're probably just kind of after they get a little further, they think, well, he really missed it that time. Um, and so as they walk away, they're kind of their faith, you know, they're, what was all that about? But 24 hours later, He's walking back by with the same disciples, and the tree had literally dried up all the way from the root, dislodging from the earth, and was completely dead within 24 hours. So there was a lesson to be learned in that. There's a lesson of when you speak something and you know you've got the power of God in what you say, because the power of life and death are in our words, that we are to be able, as people of faith, to speak something and walk away from it, knowing that God has taken care of what we have declared. There's a big lesson in this, if we will grab hold of it. Being a people of faith is leaving it in the hands of God to fulfill what he says. And that also goes with the power of prayer. When we have prayer, after the messages, we have prayer teams that come up. They are hearing when you're, they're not just seeing things because we've got a powerful prayer team. They're prophetic also. But what they see, they begin to pray. And what they are praying are the words of God with his intent over our lives. And they pray and walk away from it, expecting God to fulfill what he said in your lives. But that doesn't mean that you don't have a responsibility, too, to activate your faith with what you are hearing being prayed. So when you come up for prayer today, be expecting a move of God over your life as they pray. Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So it's impossible for God to be pleased with us. Now, this doesn't mean we are condemned because he's not a condemning God. What this actually means is that God gets excited when we trust him and when we believe him. Raw faith requires risk. We need a risk-taking courage to rise up inside of us to believe God and everything he has said. And if we're not taking risks, basically God's not pleased. He wants people to rise up in courage and trust him and move out on what we know he has said to us and be able to walk away from it in full trust. He really does want the glory. He wants the glory. But you see, if we always play life safe, Well, I don't know, you know, well, I know what they said. You know, I know it was prophesied, but they just really don't know what's going on in my life. Or you get a word about your family rising up and, 
your marriage is going to be great and God's going to bless you. And then you go, well, they don't know my husband. <laughs> or she doesn't know my wife. Uh, that's not going to happen. No, we, we can't play life safe anymore. We don't need a safety net. Mature Christians don't need a safety net. When we speak, we got to be able to jump off and know God's going to take care of us. See, a lot of times we won't pray for the sick because we're afraid that God's not going to fulfill his word. We're intimidated to speak what God says about himself. It's not that we can twist God's arm. That's not our job when we pray. We're not trying to twist God's arm. We're trusting in what he said he's going to do, and then we leave it with him to fulfill it. Well, Pastor Sandy, what if they don't? What if I pray for them and I step out in front of that whole family and I'm praying for them to be healed and they don't get healed? But what if they do? See, we can't focus on what if not happens, but what if? What if? And walk in that. Encourage. If, we, if we're going to be demonstrators of the kingdom, we need to get busy. And not shy away from taking risks. He's, God is looking for the Abrahams. The ones that hear from God when he speaks and begin to walk out in it. Sojourning the lands of our promises. Abraham sojourned a land looking for the place of promise. We've got a land to still sojourn. That land is our land of promise. We may not have experienced it all yet, but we've got a territory to take for God and demonstrate the kingdom. Will we be Abrahams that simply hear, not having to see it fulfilled yet, but here, when God says move, act, demonstrate, pray, declare, so, so, I'm talking about S O W, so seed, expecting a harvest, not being weary and well doing, but continuing to sow, trusting in God's timing, we are going to reap. Amen? Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is good. We walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing <laughs> the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Faith doesn't come by seeing. Oh, it's great if we see it. But that's not how we get faith. Faith comes by hearing what God says. And when we need to get our faith built up, what do we do? We get in the Word. We get in the Word. I'm thinking of a story, and we went through this uh, passage a couple of weeks ago, 2 Samuel ch in chapter 5 verse 17 through 25, and this is a story of when David was fighting the Philistines, but this time when I'm teaching it, I'm going, to, I'm going to give a different point, but let's just read this again. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. So what does this tell us? That when we are demonstrating our anointing. When we're walking in the anointing of God, the enemy is going to rise up. And many times it feels like a full-forced army rising up against us. But it says, David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines came and spread out in the valley of Rephraim. Now that means the valley of giants. So they were in the valley of giants but also some of the Philistines were giants themselves in size. So David asked the Lord, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, go, for I will surely hand the Philistines over to you. So David goes to Baal Parisian, which means the Lord of breakthrough, by the way. And there he defeated them. He said, as the waters break out and as the Lord has spoken out against my enemies before me. 
So that place was called Baal Parisium. The Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men carried them off. So there was a great victory. Not only did they destroy the Philistines, uh, but they also uh, took off their idols. So they defeated, at that time, uh, idolatry in the land. But look at verse 22. The Philistines came up again and spread out in the valley of giants. So David asked the Lord again, and he answered, Do not go straight up. But circle around behind them and attack them in front of the balsam trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So let's, let's look at this. And like I said a couple of weeks ago, when you defeat your enemy and you get a victory and the enemy comes back again, don't be hard on yourself. Don't think, I, what's wrong with me? I've, I've already defeated that. Why is it coming back again? It's not because you have failed. It's not because you opened a door. Many times it's just because the enemy is relentless. So don't fall into condemnation. Just ask the Lord, okay, this thing is back. How do I fight it this time? This time, church, the Lord is emphasizing the, our ability to hear, not focus on what you see. See, the second time around, David, God is telling David, he said, all right, what I want you to do, now you're, uh, I don't want you to focus on the size of this army. Because the Philistine was, that whole army was the biggest enemy, the largest in size, I should say, in stature and in numbers. So if David focused on what he saw coming toward him, he could have been completely overwhelmed. I mean, he just went through a battle recently. Now, here's another one. And probably they gained even more people to come back a second time because they didn't want to lose two times in a row. So... The Philistines were notorious from go, for going from camp to camp, even pulling in people from other tribes to fight with them. So the, the chances of having more than just Philistines fighting against David were very high. So we had a vast number of enemies uh, that were routing towards David's army. And God says, now what I want you to do, I want you to pull aside here. And then I want you to find a group of trees. And I want you just to go and kind of hide under the shade. Let it be a shade tree for a while. But just kind of hang out there and wait until you hear something. And we don't know how long that was. And can you imagine gathering all your army under these trees and trying to pack them all in there? And trying to keep everybody quiet so you can hear something? I mean, it's like, shut up. I'm waiting to hear the sound of something. I'm not really sure what this is going to sound like because I've never heard this before, but I think it's supposed to sound like chariots of angel with angels in them going across the top of these trees. So everybody be quiet because we don't want to miss it when it happens. But God didn't see. When you see them coming over the hill... Or when you see them up close about 10 yards away, or you know, it's so much easier sometimes to see with our eyes than to close our eyes and hone in and trying to hear. Because we're, we're fighting, we're competing with a lot of other noise. But when we keep our eyes open, it's easy to focus on the opposition. But this was a strategy at this time. I want you to hear this. The time before, God says, you pursue them. Well, you can't pursue your enemy with your eyes closed. So they had to go with their eyes open. But this time he says, shut your eyes and just listen with your ears. And as soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of these trees, move quickly. Because that means the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. I like that. When you hear it, move quickly. 
So many times we get a word of the Lord and we sit on it and we sit on it. We get a prophecy from, and we don't just bring in anybody to this ministry to release a prophetic word unless we know there is fruit in their lives and there's an accuracy there that goes on. And yet, I wonder how many times those prophecies get from off our phone into our ears again. How many times they're actually written out because it's important to write out those words because as it is written, so shall it be. Thank you. <laughs> she agrees. Hallelujah. That's baby language for hallelujah. Go, Pastor Sandy. I got it. So how many times are we immediately acting upon what is being said and what we hear with our faith? There, there's a lesson, another example in that particular passage. You see, the Philistines were giants in that land. And many giants are standing before so many of us today. They may not be a Philistine giant, but here's some giants that maybe you can identify with. Insecurity, inferiority, instability, fear, fear of failure, fear of sickness, fear of loss, poverty, anxiety, sickness and disease, physical limitations, fears of rejection, fears of abandonment, shame. These are giants. These are giants. But I'm telling you today, we have an anointing like David to slay the giant that stands before us. These giants are like gates that need to be destroyed and opened up so that we can experience victory. But God is saying, don't go by what you see. Don't focus on that checkbook. Don't be moved. Don't be moved by the number of likes in your Facebook account. Some people get their identity by all their likes in Facebook. And then when they don't get liked, they get frustrated and they feel like nobody loves them. When did our value come from Facebook? I, this, that frustrates me. I like Facebook sometimes. My issue is I don't have time to do it. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm going to hire somebody to help me do it, I guess, because I can't find time to do it. But either way, if we get our value with how much somebody opens up or clicks or likes or shares, I'm like, what, what, is, what has happened when our value and our self-worth comes from God. That, that's who we are. We're his children. And it's not even about who we are. It's whose we are. Who do we belong to? What does God say about us? Listen to what heaven says about you. Heaven says you're loved. Heaven says you're accepted. Heaven says you're strong and you're courageous. Heaven says you have broken through because I have broken through on your behalf. Heaven says, believe, simply believe, and nothing will be impossible to you. Heaven says, by his stripes, you're already healed. Heaven says, you're a king's kid. You already have been given provision. God is looking for people like Elijah that even Pastor Mickey mentioned earlier. He heard the sound of an abundance of rain before the rain came. He, if he had focused on what he saw in the natural, he would have never been able to pray rain in because his eyes could only see drought and death and destruction. But it says in Scripture that when he heard the sound of abundance of rain, what did he do? He basically hunkered down and prayed. He had to close his eyes. He got in a prayer position. And he stayed in the prayer position. Basically, he got down almost on his knees. And it's, it's referred to many times as a birthing position because 
the uh, Hebraic women in those times got in the same position to literally birth. Uh, back in those days, they had what was called a birthing stool. And they would, the women would sit on a stool to help push the child, and that's how they would deliver their children. So Elijah basically got on a, on a birthing stool in the spirit and just kind of hunkered down, and he birthed in what he heard. Many times what you are hearing, it may take some effort. But how many of you know that when Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain, he had to move quickly. He had to move quickly. And then he kept sending his servant, go look again, go look again. But he wouldn't focus on what he saw in the natural. The first time the servant comes back and says, well, I don't see nothing there. I, maybe you missed it. Go again, go look again. And then sometimes what you hear, you still have to filter because the servant kept coming back with, it's not happening. It, was, it could have been a negative report, but he chose to, to, to use a Holy Spirit filter because he knew what he heard. And anything else that was said, any other sound that was said, he wouldn't listen to because he was focused on the sound he originally heard from heaven. What's our filter? Elijah's looking around, but what he was hearing was contradicting what he saw in the natural. Many times what you hear is going to contradict what you are witnessing every day, day in, day out. Things don't change. Negative reports keep coming. But you've got to be willing to stand and believe what God says and know it's just a contradiction as to what heaven has declared. You'll never hear heaven say, give up, quit, throw in the towel. It's not going to happen. You're a fool for believing that. You'll never hear heaven tell you to stop believing. Are we going to live by what we hear or what we see? Scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You can see bread, but the words from the mouth of God have to be heard, have to be heard. In the parable of the sower, Jesus talks about how the sower sows seeds on the different types of the earth, and we're not going to look at this in Scripture I believe every one of you have heard that story, that parable of how the sower is sowing the seed on the soil of man's hearts. That's what the whole parable is about, about the heart of man and being ready to receive truth as, as the Lord releases his word, that our hearts are ready, our, our hearts um, aren't tainted by the cares of life. And that our hearts aren't hardened with the experiences that we've gone through and the different challenges we face. But that our hearts are always ready, pliable, and that our hearts are good soil all the time. But Jesus says something very interesting as he's sharing this particular passage. Shares, shares this many times throughout scripture. He says, um, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He doesn't say, he who has eyes to see, let him see what I'm talking about. He's talking about, hear the word of the Lord, hear with your ears, hear. And then he even goes further in one passage concerning this parable of the sower, and he says, and take heed how you hear. So he said, on one hand, hear, it's important to hear, but take heed how you hear it. I remember one time I had a, a dream, and I was actually teaching on the parable that I'm referring to. And I had, and in my dream, 
there was a piece of my ear that had attached to my eyeball. It was kind of, it was really kind of strange, but it was normal in my dream. But I knew it wasn't supposed to be there. So in my dream, I'm going to all these doctors trying to find out wh why my ear is on my eye. <laughs> and I finally found this one doctor, and he said, well, you're not, he said, your ear is supposed to be hearing, but you're allowing what you see influence how you hear. And I knew exactly what I was going through because I was hearing a lot of things negative were going on totally different as to what God had spoken to me. And I was allowing that to affect me. And what happens to us is that the cares of life, the challenges we face, affect how we hear from God. If you, hear, if you have had an issue with authority figures in your life, and yet God talks about honor, honor, honor people in the house of God. Every single one of you sitting here today and everyone listening to the sound of my voice needs to be honored. We all deserve a level of honor. Some people deserve more honor because of their positions of authority. Our president deserves honor. We may disagree with some of his policies, but he deserves honor. Uh, leaders in the house of God deserve levels of honor. But if we've been wounded by authority and we're teaching a message like that, if they've been wounded, they're going to go, oh, I don't know. I've been hurt before. Uh, you just don't know what's happened to me. So-and-so abused me. We're, see, we've got to get past that. Don't, don't allow what you've experienced in the natural 24-7 influence what God is speaking to us when he brings forth revelation. It's, it, when revelation comes, it's for the intent of us going up another level in the spirit realm so that we can have even more power and authority to demonstrate the kingdom of God. So we see that it's important how we hear and to be people that aren't moved by what we see, but moved by what we hear. Faith does come by hearing the word of the Lord. All right, there's a story I wanted to tell you if I can locate it. I've moved way past my notes here. It was a, a story of a football game. It was, it was very interesting. Here it is. All right. Um, it's a very interesting football story I found on the web, and I've heard this story told before. It's a story about the University of Wisconsin back in the 1980s. While attending a football game in the Badger Stadium, over 60,000-plus fans gathered together, hopefully to ob observe their favorite team defeat the University of Michigan, and their mascot was the Spartans. So they were in the Badger Stadium. Uh, University of Wisconsin is in a, a football game against Michigan State. And it says here, I've, I've written this down to read it because I won't be able to remember it if I don't read it. It says, even when the home field advantage was in effect, it didn't take long to see that the Wisconsin team was not going to win. They were being overplayed at every turn. And every time the Spartans would score another touchdown, the Wisconsin's fell behind even more at the end of every quarter. The more they lost, the louder, though, the fans became. The coaches and players were stunned to hear that the fans cheered while watching their team lose. Every time they fumbled or they lost a play, there was shouting and screaming even more at the end of every quarter. And the, and the football players and the coaches were wondering, what is going on? We're losing, and they're getting more excited. So they began to get, you know, a little frustrated. But it turns out that 70 miles away, the Milwaukee Brewers were beating the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. <laughs> and the Wisconsin fans were listening to the game on their portable radios. <laughs> they were responding to what they were hearing and not what they were seeing. 
And so basically they were celebrate, celebrating this great victory in the presence of obvious defeat. The question to us is, are we responding to what we see or what we're hearing? In one area, defeat can occur, but in another area or arena, I should say, something victorious can still be happening. What are we going to choose? We can look at people like um, Abraham, Elijah. What about Joseph? When he was in prison, completely shackled, in bondage, while in fetters and chains, it says that he remembered the promises of God. It says the word of God tried him. When all he could see was prison, I mean, the horror of prison in those times, I mean, our, our, um, those that are incarcerated today, it's, it's not fun. It's still bad. It's, it's a horrible situation. But in those times, it was so much worse, and disease was rampant in those types of uh, environments. But Joseph had to keep inside of his heart what he had seen in a vision, but he heard what God had promised him in those visions. The Word of God, the Word of God, it says, tried him. What about Joshua? I mean, at, at the beginning of uh, the book of Joshua, over and over, God tells Joshua, be strong, be courageous, I'm with you, you're going to win this battle. Be strong, be bold, be courageous, take a risk. He tells us the same thing, take a risk, I'll be with you, you'll defeat your enemy, but go, do something, cross over, walk away. And yet, at Jericho, he faced the largest walls he'd ever seen, the strongest gates possible, walls that were so thick that two chariots could ride side by side down them around that wall. And yet, he was instructed by God through a word. He didn't have a vision. He didn't see the victory. He had to hear it, and then he could see it. God said, you're not going to use your weapon. Just put your swords away. You're just going to march around while they're watching you, hurling threats about you. Don't you know that Jericho, they put those people on the wall, and they laughed, march around Jericho once, one day. I mean, and they, you know, on the seventh day, they march seven times. And that's all they're doing. They're marching. And they're not talking. They can't talk back. These people are shouting, oh, look at those stupid Israelites. What are they going to do tomorrow? And yet they can't talk back. They have to be quiet. They're not supposed to say not one single word. And then... They're going to defeat the enemy with a shout. But he heard. He heard. And he obeyed. He couldn't allow what he saw in the natural to discourage him. If he was focusing on what he saw, think about it. So he had to keep reminding. I can just imagine him walking around. He had to keep reminding him. Now, Lord, I know, you. I know what you said. I know what you said. I'm choosing to believe you. I know that that's a big wall. I hear the shouts from our enemy. I know the people are getting concerned that are marching with me. And then Gideon, like Josh said, Gideon, who was fearful, he was the least. He considered himself the least in his clan. And he's hiding from his enemy when the Lord speaks to him and says, Hey, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. Who, me? That can't be me. But he had to keep hearing the, the Lord speak to him. He kept, he, and even when he went to battle, he became afraid again. But, you know, remember what happened? 
he went down to the enemy's camp in fear. Now that, that's what amazes me. This is what God told him. He said, you know, you're going to go. You're going to defeat your enemy. But if you get there and you're afraid, go down to the camp of the enemy. Hello? I'm afraid, and you want to send me down to the camp by myself and leave my army there, and I'm going to go. He takes somebody with him, but still just one. And it's like, what's wrong with this picture? But when he, he, that's what he does. He's afraid, so he goes to the camp, and he overhears the word of the Lord. Somebody has a dream, and he says, oh, this dream means that Gideon's going to defeat us this day. So Gideon couldn't focus on what he saw. He had to hear what God was saying through somebody else, interpreting a dream. And then we know his faith rose up. He got courageous because he took heed how he heard. See, we can let the crazy stuff in our world dictate our day. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. All we have to do is turn on the news. But if we allow what is being said and all the controversies going on, it actually this tells me it's just gotten worse. It continues to get worse. And I keep thinking, well, what else? What else could happen? I've learned not to say that because God will show you what else. Or the enemy will bring it in. But we've got to continue to hear from a different world. We really do. We can watch defeat, but we can hear something contrary to defeat if we will touch heaven. Don't limit your day by Trump's tweets. Or CNN or the Wall Street Journal. And even when we turn on Fox News, they don't have all the answers either. The answers come from heaven. The answers will tell us how to pray. God's voice will keep our hearts humble. And if we will hear from heaven, we can love each other, whether we are Republican or Democrat. Because that's not what matters. What matters is God's perfect will being done on our earth and in our nation. We can have problems. And we do have problems. We have, we have crisis. We have sickness. We have, we have challenges because... We live in a fallen world. They're just going to happen. We don't have to open doors to the enemy to have challenges. It's because we live in a fallen world. But, it, but we can hear from heaven and praise God for the victory, even when our circumstances look defeating. Because why? Our faith overcomes. Our faith overcomes. We are overcomers. We are divinely created and inspired to be an overcomer. And we really can't settle for less. If we settle for less, we're admitting defeat. And really, God don't make no junk. Turn your radio on. There used to be a song like that. Turn your radio on. What are we listening to? What frequency are we tuned to? A frequency of heaven? Because we teach in our prophetic school how to hear from heaven. And, and we teach how to fine-tune to hear God's voice. But do you know how it's taught? It's about faith. It's still a matter of faith. We prophesy the word of the Lord by faith. We're trusting that when we open our mouths, God's going to fill it. Let me tell you about somebody that has faith in this house. Now, I know, I mean, I know a lot of you really well. I'd like to get to know more of you. Come to our gatherings. That's where I get to know you. 
come to our home and we open our home. A lot of you have opportunities to get to know each other, but that's when I get to know you even better. But I have someone sitting right here on the front row, Miss Dahlia, that just recently had faith. You know, I'm calling her because I need someone to go with me to South Korea. And I'm texting, actually, and we've talked about it for a while. And I keep wanting to take a team in, but they don't have transportation to take teams yet, so I have to take maybe just one or two. And so I contacted Dahlia because we've been talking about this for a year, and we found out. I only had like a month or two to get the tickets all ready, and, and the communication gap between us and South Korea is, is hard. It's just very difficult. So we're texting back and forth, trying to communicate, and she can't understand me. And even though we've got a translator involved, it's still difficult, and things get confused. So now it's down to the wire, and they're wanting me to – Booked my ticket, so I settled a date, and I contacted Dahlia, and I said, okay, we're ready. They're ready to book tickets, and she says, Pastor Sandy, I'm having an issue with my passport. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, passport, it takes about a week, maybe 10 days here in Texas. And she said, oh, you understand. We find out now it's British, has to go to British passport because she's from the islands. Now they told her it's going to take four to six weeks. And this is what she said. It's going to take four to six weeks, but, you know, Pastor Sandy, I'm supposed to go. And I'm just, you know, God's going to do this. And I'm like, four to six weeks, and I'm just getting through to them. And now, and so every day that goes by, they're, they're contacting me like, when are you going to get the, we got to get the other ticket. We, we, we ready. We ready. That's what I get from there. It's all broken English. After I, after I come back from South Korea, if I, te if I talk in broken English for four weeks, you got to go everything. Me ready, you come, we go. Me preach, you do this, I'm hungry, go eat, round the corner. You know, it's all broken up. So Pastor Mickey's like, what are you trying to tell me? Because I'm, so anyway, so they're like, we ready, we ready, we buy, do now. And I'm like, okay, can't now, wait, passport. When passport, need now, we ready, we pay now. So this goes on for another week or two, and I'm back and forth, and now they're getting upset with me because they think me no come. <laughs> and, and they're going, we want mom. We want mom now, today. Understand, question mark, question mark, question. Understand, I try. You know, so it's, and here we go. So I'm on Dahlia, how much longer? Because they're mad at me. And she says, oh, you know, they say four to six weeks, but, but they just sent me this word that something's coming in a few days and I'm going to sign. And I said, but is it your passport number? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because God's already told me I'm going to go. And I'm like, Dahlia, they're upset. And so she's back again. It, it, I just know. I just know. And I'm like, she just knows. <laughs> and so that woman, I'm telling you, she, it, God came through. In the amount of time, what, what they said would take four to six weeks was what, two, two and a half? Okay. A week. From the U.S. to British, it took a week for them to process it. was So less than two weeks. Less than two weeks. And we were right at that. They told me, they said, if this is what was really amazing, because I'm, I'm talking to Dahlia on Friday, or maybe it was even Saturday. And I said, they have told me that if I don't have this by Monday, at, was it noon? Monday at noon that they're moving on and I'll just be going by myself. Because, see, what happens is those tickets keep going up in price, and it was already up quite a bit waiting, you know, just that little bit more of time. But it was like 11 o'clock that you text me, something like that. Well, you tell it. Thursday, 
uh, Friday, first Friday, Pastor Cindy says, is it here? Is it here? And I said, no, it wasn't what we thought. So I was waiting for the text for them to say, sign for your passport. Nothing. I get to work, and I get a text early Monday morning, and it said, you're getting your documents. You have to sign for it. And at noon, she said, I had to have everything by noon on Monday. Well, Monday morning, it was like Monday midday, my passport came. And I was able to give it to her that Monday without, without forewarning or anything. Just a text saying your passport is here that Monday. Before noon. And I'm thinking, this is impossible. <laughs> I was. I mean, for, for them to say six, four to six weeks, and it's not even, it's, it's less than two weeks. And then she just signed one document on Friday, and they said, after that, your passport will be released. But like I told Dahlia, I said, well, that could take, you know, it could take two or three more weeks because they said four to six because I'm trying to get back with South Korea and give them some kind of answer. So, I mean, basically, I thought this, this is, I said, well, this could take a miracle. And I looked down at my phone that morning. And she said, I got my passport, Pastor Sandy. <laughs> Praise God. But I know Dahlia, she was jumping and shouting and crying. And every time I talked, she said, well, God's good. He's put, I'm going to go. I just, I'm telling you, I'm going to go. Pastor Sandy, I know what you're doing. And I said, I need. Now, Dahlia, watch my mouth. <laughs> I need you to watch my mouth. I need you to understand. Are you getting this? Monday at noon or else you really can't go. And I'm thinking, oh, she's getting her hopes up. She's getting her faith up. Well, look what happened to her. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> she birthed that. She birthed that in. And she kept, and it didn't, it, she would just look at me, and I'd go, now, Dahlia, and she'd go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she was just waiting for me to get through with my negativity, and she would say, yes, Pastor Sandy, yes, but, you know, I'm supposed to go, and I'm just believing. Every time. So we walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes we may have to birth something all the way in, even when people around us are negative. I was believing. I really was, but you're the one that birthed it. You're the one that birthed it. Well, come on, let's stand to our feet. God is an awesome God, and I'm telling you today that what he has promised you, he intends to bring it to pass. It's just that we have a part in it. Let's reactivate our faith today, no matter what it looks like in the natural. God has already told us he has broken through on our behalf. Amen. Now, there are people here that need healing in their bodies. Father, we just lift your hands if you need healing. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the healing anointing. Thank you, Lord, you said that we are already healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed already. So we just activate our faith right now for those healing miracles in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that blood sugar is normalized. Kidneys are healed right now in Jesus' name. Father, I just take authority over any cancer cells that try to activate and become, uh, become a disease. Father, we thank you for cleansing our system from any blood cells that could prove that want to prove opposite of what you have declared over our bodies lord i just decree and declare arthritis is being healed right now in jesus name i come against pain in the mighty name of jesus and lord i thank you for removing all pain somebody right now i, I see a stiff neck god is healing someone's neck right now just receive that just Take it by faith. Receive it. 
even start moving your neck to see if it's still bothering you father thank you for i see it like someone has a problem with the left leg stiffness in the left leg god is touching that right now thank you lord for the anointing thank you father god someone's been having headaches father in jesus name i take authority over migraine headaches I'm hearing the Lord say, that was in the past. You're going to see a difference in the future where it's not. It was happening often, but now you're going to see that I have touched that area, and I'm healing migraines. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just press in. All blood vessels, heart issues, blood flow problems. Father, thank you for touching that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I just send the word to uh, one of our relatives, my brother-in-law. Father, I thank you for healing his lungs right now in Jesus' name. All blood clot problems being dissolved and removed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a canopy of healing right now, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just feel, even now, it could be someone listening to the sound of my voice, but I kept hearing the word multiple sclerosis. God is healing that. Someone received that by faith that either has generational issues with that, and they're afraid that they're going to suffer the same The Lord is breaking you free from the generational curse of muscular sclerosis. And Father, I thank you for touching that body right now in Jesus' name. And back problems, I just saw a light go down someone's back that's having very severe back pain. And the Lord is touching that and healing that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just the sound of your name, Lord Jesus, brings healing. Your name, Jesus, shifts the atmosphere of affliction into an atmosphere of divine healing and restoration. Someone here, I saw a broken heart. Your heart has been broken by a relationship. The Lord is touching that and healing the memory and the pain of that past relationship. It has kept you from being able to step forward into your new beginnings with God and a new relationship. So, Lord, touch that heart right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing past memories. Now, this is something so many of us can receive, but... Any past memory that keeps us in a place that where it has become a monument in our lives. A memory that just keeps rising up. It should, it should be dead. It should be buried. But it's become a monument of pain. God says, let me touch that right now. Let me heal that. Let me cleanse that from your heart. Give that to me. The Lord says, just give it to me. But I want to heal it. I want to touch it. So, Father, thank you right now for healing all past memories that bring shame, condemnation, pain, rejection, isolation. Whatever the manifestation is, you want to heal it. So we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, Josh is going to lead us in a worship song. I want the prayer team to come up. If I mention anything that you need prayer for, maybe something I mentioned you want extra prayer for, if you have another issue that you want prayer, remember the word of the Lord earlier was they're they're hearing from heaven when they pray for you. So if you want agreement, this is a time to come forth and let these prayer warriors touch heaven and declare it over your life as we sing just a few moments and worship the Lord. Go ahead and come forth. We have
uh, communion here available as well. And we want to thank those of you on Facebook and mo uh, social media that joined us today. Thank you for being here and join us again in the future. God bless. Lord, I give you my heart, give you my soul.